This video has been sponsored by EcoFlow. There's a surprising reaction people have when I tell them that I have solar panels, and it's one that I think reveals some big misconceptions. See, I think the first question people would have would be something like, how much power do they produce? Or even, how many panels do you have? Or even, what does it cost? But no, the main question seems to be about batteries. Where are the batteries? What about batteries? You didn't say anything about batteries. Batteries, batteries, batteries. There's a big misconception out there that if you have solar panels, then you also have to have batteries. And those batteries can be really expensive. So I wanna address this. I do think batteries are really cool and integrating them with solar is definitely the right way to go for many people. But for others, it may not be. So I wanna tell you why I didn't design my solar array with batteries and why you may not need to either. And I wanna cover why you should consider getting batteries depending on your situation. Here's where my solar panels connect to the inverters. These inverters sync up with the power grid and convert the DC current from the solar panels to alternating current. And in my system, there are no batteries. The number one reason why I designed my system without batteries is because of something called net metering. For every kilowatt hour I send to the grid, I get a one for one credit. Another way to say this is that in Pennsylvania, where I live, I get the full retail credit for any excess I don't use and send to the grid. And practically what this means is that our home can be net zero. The credits build up over the summer and in the winter months, because we have electric heat and less sun, I use up those credits. Here's an example from our recent electric bill. We started the month with 5,000 kilowatt hours banked up. We gave about 700 kilowatt hours to the grid and we withdrew about 1,000 kilowatt hours over the course of the month. And that left us with about 4,700 kilowatt hours that we can draw from in the future. So in effect, because my inverters are connected to the power grid and I have this net metering agreement, it's in a sense like the power grid is a giant battery for me. Right here is the bi-directional meter. It records energy flowing in both directions. The 401 number is the energy that I've drawn from the power grid, and the 402 number is the energy that I've sent to the power grid. And what's cool for me is that since this meter started at zero kilowatt hours, you can see that the 402 number is bigger. This means that in over two years since I've had the system, I've generated more kilowatt hours than I've used, and I'm getting credit for all those. So where does all this excess power go? It goes to this transformer in my backyard. And so any of my neighbors who are connected to this transformer, they're technically getting all that excess power that my solar panels have generated. So if you're in a state or a place that offers full retail net metering, you may not need to get integrated batteries with your solar panels. Another reason why I didn't integrate batteries into my solar array is because we have a stable grid connection here. Like the power rarely goes out. And when it does, it's usually not for very long. So I didn't feel it was worth the added expense and install time to get the large integrated batteries just for the few times that the power goes out. But our power isn't perfect and any power outage is a real pain. So to deal with these rare outages, instead of getting the integrated batteries, I have portable batteries like this that I can pull out and use to power critical loads like my refrigerator, my freezer, to be able to cook, and of course, make coffee. These all-in-one units like this are great whether you have solar or not, and they're portable so you can take them anywhere you go. Here are some examples. I have these four units here that EcoFlow sent me from the smallest to the largest capacity. Something that I really like about these units is that they all have the ability to be recharged by solar power. So one battery with one solar power can be its own portable mini power grid. They all have DC and AC ports on them. Here you have the River Pro, the Delta Mini, the Delta, and the Delta Max. All of these are on Black Friday sale, and down in the description I'll have links to the most up-to-date deals. Each one of these has its own capacity and power output, so the higher you go up, the bigger capacity you get in output power and also solar input. If you're just starting out, I might recommend the Delta Mini. It has a 1400 watt inverter and can surge up to 2100 watts. So this means you can use it for most refrigerators, microwave ovens, and even small air conditioners. For example, I used it recently to run my full-size refrigerator for almost six hours. And if you want the largest capacity and the greatest expandability, then the Delta Max is your way to go because you can add two extra smart batteries for a total of six kilowatt hours of storage, as well as when the EcoFlow gas generator comes out, you can connect it up to one of the ports on here and power it that way. A third reason why I didn't get integrated batteries is because they can be very expensive. For example, a Tesla Powerwall can cost over $10,000 each. And given those two previous factors I mentioned, in my opinion, I think it's an unnecessary expense. 
Actually, a number of solar installers that I've spoken to tell me about how they have to tell people that this is a big expense and they don't really need the batteries, especially if they have full retail net metering. So will I ever get integrated batteries with my solar panels? Well, maybe. I actually think it's really cool that you can have your own battery bank to supply power to your house, whether there's a grid or not. So for me, if net metering rules change or the grid becomes unreliable or something else, then I'm definitely up for looking into it. So those were three reasons why I didn't integrate batteries into my solar array, but now I wanna give you four reasons why you might wanna consider integrated batteries with solar panels. And the first one is you're planning to be off grid. Either you desire to be off grid or there's no possibility, or it's just cost prohibitive to connect to the utility power. And so you're gonna need batteries and the size and scope of your battery setup depends on your desires and your situation. For example, if you have a small cabin that you go to every so often, a portable battery unit might be the way to go. So I pointed out the Delta Max before with two smart batteries. That particular situation would give you six kilowatts of storage and you can bring that with you to the cabin and then take it home and use it for something else. But if you're planning to live off grid longer term or have higher power needs, then you probably want something more extensive that will seamlessly work with your house wiring. And there's many options for those kinds of things. So actually post any questions or help answer any questions related to that below. So a second reason to consider batteries with your home solar is if you have time of use rates. This is where you pay different rates from to the electric company depending on the time of day. And it can make economical sense to get batteries so you can manage things like your solar input versus your load output so that you can draw power from the grid when the prices are the least expensive. So for example, if you have solar and batteries and use those when the electric rates are higher and then charge up your batteries when prices are lower. Or if there's a situation where you can benefit from selling power back to the grid at a higher rate and that makes more economical sense than having battery storage can help you accomplish that. The third consideration is if your net metering rate is less than full retail. If you aren't in a state or a situation that gives you the full retail credit per excess kilowatt hour or the rates change depending on the time of day, then it makes sense to crunch the numbers and see if getting a battery integrated with your solar is financially worth it. In many situations, the power company will only pay you the wholesale rate for your kilowatt hours and not the retail rate. So for example, if the retail rate is 11 cents per kilowatt hour, you might only get like four, five, or six cents on the wholesale rate. So it's better than nothing, but adding batteries in might make financial sense. And I could see it making sense, especially where you're not home during the day and you can charge up your batteries from solar because no one's there and it's not using much power. And if you make excess power, you can sell that to the grid. And then when you come home, you can run your batteries when it gets dark. But again, you have to crunch the numbers to make sure it's worth it. So this fourth consideration doesn't have to do with finances, and it's if you have an unreliable power grid. You might wanna get solar and batteries because your power grid, you just can't rely on it, and I get that. If you lose power often and for long periods of time, it may just be worth it to have a system that switches on when the grid goes down. And if you don't wanna run around getting extension cords and plugging in a portable battery unit, you want a seamless backup that you can switch over to either automatically or by flipping a few switches. And maybe for you in that situation, price is just not a big factor for that kind of security and provision. So hopefully I help you understand a little bit more about batteries and solar and that you don't always have to get an integrated battery bank if you get solar panels. Now, if you like this video, you might want to check out the video where I break down the details of what I spent on my solar system and how much it produces right over here.